Hello. Look, okay, <laughs> I know I just looked like I just got off the, the boat with the Gordon's Fisherman. Please put that out of your mind. This is really important. I want to start this off with a public service announcement for every U.S.-based startup, small business, what have you. If you're in the U.S. and you have fewer than 20 employees, you're 20 or fewer employees, there's a really important thing you have to file with the U.S. government to, you know, ensure that they don't come after you and they don't fine you and they don't audit you. And it's a new ruling. I want to read it to you so you know what's happening. But please pay attention to this one. Please share it with your friends. If you know other entrepreneurs in the U.S. who might not be tracking on this, maybe their counsel didn't tell them or their CPA, or maybe they're still kind of flying by the seat of their pants. This one's really, really important. Please trust me because it could result in huge fines if you don't deal with this before December 31st of this year. And it is the Beneficial Ownership Information Report. Super easy to file. You don't need any help doing it. You can just go to the site. I will link up the site. I will link up a video that will walk you through the whole process. But I need you to do this. Like, stop what you're doing right now if you have a startup and go file this information. Why? Let me tell you why. I'm going to read it off to you so I don't misconstrue everything. The Corporate Transparency Act aimed at combating illicit financial activity went into effect on January 1st, 2021. Under the act, small businesses in the United States, and yes, okay, tangent, I hate that the U.S. government conflates small business and startups, but it is what it is here. In this case, the U.S. government thinks of your startup as a small business. I don't think of it as a small business. They do. So they want you to file this paperwork. So please pay attention to it. Let me get back to it. Small businesses in the United States need to file beneficial ownership information reports or BOIR because the U.S. government always needs acronyms with the Department of the Treasury by January 1st, 2025. Failure not you, because you're going to take care of it right now. Failure to submit new paperwork by the deadline of January 1st, 2025, put small business owners at risk, or, or startup founders, startup founders did at risk for criminal penalties, imprisonment, and fines up to $10,000. So that's the public service announcement. Get that done before the end of the year. I will link up stuff so you can deal with it. Again, if you're a founder who has a bunch of friends who are starting things or have, you know, employees, but not more than 20 that uh, are working on startups, I would really like you to, to take care of this and make sure you're covered. So take a look at the video, follow the link, submit the report. I just want to make sure you're on the up and up. Cool. Cool. Let's get in to the startup news for the week. But please... <laughs> Go file that stuff. Like, uh, I, I'll remind you at the end, too. Like, watch the whole thing. Like, don't... You, you got some time. But uh, watch this. I'll, I'll remind you at the end to go file the thing again. So, okay. So, the if you're in Portland, hello. Hello. Welcome. It's good to see you. Sorry to start this out on a stressful note. I know it's kind of a quiet week. But uh, I, this, this is important stuff, like the feds want your paperwork, and that's part, unfortunately, of being a founder and building a business, is doing all the unfun things associated with being a founder. So, so just go file that stuff. Just get it done. One of the fun things associated with being a founder, being in the startup community, is getting together with other people in the startup community. So uh, if you're in Portland, which I hope you are, or if you're in Oregon, close enough to Portland, and you have the time to travel to Portland, or if you're in southwestern Washington or Seattle, anywhere, Pacific Northwest, you have the time to travel to Portland, I would love to see you at our kind of beginning of the year kickoff thingamajig, January 14th. So uh, just save the date. 
We're still figuring out details about where it'll be, what'll be happening. I will link up a meetup group that'll allow you to RSVP and stay in the loop about what's happening. But basically, if you can be down here the second Tuesday of January, and who knows, you, you know, we might start doing everything on the second Tuesday. It, it could be a thing. January 14th, we're having a gathering, get you connected. If you're new to town, if you're old to town, if you want to know what's going on in Portland, January 14th, Portland startup community gathering of some sort with some particular format, just save the date. RSVP will keep you in the loop because it would be good to see you there. I would love to kick the year off the right way, getting people connected to one another, giving people information about what's happening in the coming months, in the next year. Just, you know, we need these times to get together and, and really talk to one another and, and just be together in person to figure out what's going on and to connect. And so uh, that's, the, that's the gist, even though the details aren't currently ironed out. January 14th, Portland, please come hang out with the Portland startup community. Would love to see you there. I'll be there. I'll be <laughs> I kind of have to be there because I'm organizing it, but uh, I will be there. Lots of other people will be there. We'll get you all connected again, especially probably important for newer people who are like, who are, who, who do I need to know? Who do I need to connect with for newer people? It'll be great for people who've been here for a while. I would love to have you there as well to ensure you get connected. And as I'm watching the RSVPs, I'll be like, Oh, so-and-so just RSVP'd. I know they need to connect with this person who they've never met before. So I will be watching for that kind of stuff so that when you're at the event, I can be like, hey, it's you. You need to talk to this person, like connecting dots and all that kind of thing. I will take care of that as well. So please be there January 14th. So we've officially entered the holiday season. This is my gift to you. Just click subscribe and every week, I will send you a video, maybe two, maybe three. I don't know, but at least one. It's like a video of the week club. You know, it's it's almost like those old Columbia CD clubs or like the jelly of the month club, but it's a, it's a half-ass video for me. So <laughs> please take the opportunity to subscribe. It would be good to see you every week. And I would really love to send you news about the amazing startups in the Portland area, Oregon, Pacific Northwest, and all the things you need to be keeping track of. My gift to you every week. You know those times when you're like sitting in your, your armchair, your lazy boy, and you're watching like The Price is Right or, or Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy or whatever, and you're like watching somebody you're like, ah, I could do better. I could do better than that. Or maybe you're watching Hot Ones. And you're like, ah, you know, that that's not that hot. That's not that big a deal. I could totally breeze through that. Well, now, thanks to Jason Langsdorf, you're going to have your opportunity if you're a web developer to to put your money where your mouth is or, or, or whatever the appropriate phrase is. He is doing a casting call for a new startup web developer tech kind of game showy thing and i he he's done a ton on youtube with learn with jason like i love learn with jason i love watching everything jason does he gets some amazing people to like do <laughs> weirdly competitive things he has really great conversations with people but this is this is like full on game show competitive game show thing that he's promoting is doing a casting call for it it's called leet heat and supposedly you have to be willing potentially to eat uh very spicy items to participate in this thing so who knows maybe it's got a little hot ones vibe i don't know i just saw it was happening and i thought you might be interested in it i thought if you were one of those people who were super like oh yeah i could totally do better than that then this might be a thing you'd, you'd want to apply for. And, and I think Jason's great, and I think his show's great, and I think the thing he does to uh, highlight not only web developers, but 
he does this amazing thing that is not counterintuitive, but like against the grain in terms of like hustle culture and those kind of things. Cause he admittedly like really kind of burnt himself out doing what he was trying to do and, and has taken, you know, retrospectively taken a much more healthy approach to the work he's doing. He's a fantastic developer. Like I really enjoy the people he brings together on some of his other efforts and the, the web development that they do. And I always learn something from watching it. So I expect no less of this game show called Leet Heat. And of course, you can spell it in Leet speak if you want to. And that would be what? 1337H347? Uh, I think that's Leet Heat. But anyway, I don't know the exact premise. It's a casting call. If you think you have what it takes to like be competitive in a game show environment, uh, hang out with, with Jason and, and all of his awesomeness and potentially eat some spicy foods. That's as much info as I've got, but I, I would love to see you there. And, uh, and I will probably be paying pretty close attention to see who competes there. And if you're a Portland person, I mean, this is open to everyone, everyone anywhere, but if you're a Portland person, I'll be especially, <laughs> especially tuned in to what you're doing but the other important thing is if you're from if you're from somewhere else and you're like i i can compete on that that elite heat thingamajig with the web devs yeah uh, is paid for you as what well. travel food food and food and travel are paid for you as well so uh if that sounds interesting to you i will link that up i believe that application is due like pretty soon, like this weekend, uh, maybe even sooner. Like it might, be, it might be December 1st. It might be November 30th. Anyway, uh, I will link it up. If you're catching this and you think you're a person who could participate in that, please submit your application again. Even if you don't make the cut, I'll keep you up to date on what's going on with Lead Heat. It sounds fairly entertaining. I would love to see what happens, and especially if there are Portland people and, you know, Oregon people, Pacific Northwest people competing there. I would love to keep an eye on what's happening, and we'll keep you all up to date on what's what with Lead Heat. So I know Portland's limited in its, in its kind of like broadband offerings, or, you know, you've got the two kind of juggernauts competing of the Comcast and the CenturyLink. And then there are a few others here and there. And then of course you've got other ways of connecting to the interwebs, but apparently Portland has a fairly good digital quality of life. Now I would not have expected this and I would not have assumed this, but I was reading a piece by O'Malley. Uh, who used to run the blog GigaOm back in back in the day, and he still continues to blog. O'Malley highlighted this report that they kind of like compared cities here and there, and I think Chicago wound up being the top city. But it was basically looking at like accessibility of broadband, the speed of broadband, uh, a few other factors that I'm not remembering right now given that I, it's Thanksgiving. I just got done with Thanksgiving. So there's a lot of tryptophan in my brain and I can't remember, but the, uh, the fact is Portland's within the top 10 of those, of, of those communities. And that's super interesting for me for, for several reasons. One, Portland has always been a fairly kind of remote first community. We've had a lot of people in our community who have tended to work in remote jobs. Uh, but these days we have a lot of folks who are in remote first startups or, or remote first companies. They're in distributed organizations. And it's super interesting to hear that Portland is among the top cities for that kind of like digital access for people living here. And I think that's a really important thing to keep an eye on. Could it be improved? 
Absolutely. Like I, I, I was looking at our speeds and they're not great. It was some of the other, I mean, they're really good, but compared to some of the others, our speeds weren't the best, but there were other factors that kind of bubbled this up to a higher level. So uh, is it perfect? No. Is it good? Yes. And I think, you know, just like think about that. If you're building a startup, if you're working on other things that, that require, you know, that digital access, that digital quality of life, rest assured, Portland is one of the towns that is potentially the best place to be doing those kind of things. So that's always good to hear. I will keep an eye on it. I don't know if this is going to be a, a regular thing, like a annual thing or what, but I'll keep an eye on it. I'll let you know. But for, for, for now, Portland has ranked very highly in the digital quality of life. Okay. This was a, this is a quick one because it, it was a graph. It was a whole post by Crunchbase News that they were going through like, oh, Oregon VC and smaller state VC and yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, part of it was they were going through other states before and they're like, oh, these smaller states are really doing a good job. And then they're like, oh, by the way, Oregon's also doing okay. And uh, I was like, hey, great. But the, the part of it was looking at the graph, like uh, some states had these, it was a bar graph. So some states have these bars that were like, whoosh, and then they'd be whoosh, whoosh, kind of thing. And then Oregon's bars were like, whoosh, whoosh. but even these whoosh, whoosh bars, the little tiny bars, the 2023 bar was, <laughs> was so tiny. It was so small. <laughs> poor, poor Oregon in 2023 from a venture capital perspective. I don't know. It was like $200. I think $200 of venture capital, not 200 million, mind you. I think it was $200, period. $200 and 97 cents was the amount of venture capital raised in Portland in 2023. But in 2024, suddenly it's up over, you know, $600 million of VC. So that's a significant increase from, from $200 and 97 cents to 600 million. Okay. Don't, don't fact check me on those numbers. I'm just saying it was not good in 2023. It's looking much better in 2024. Not that VC is the be all and end all, but I think it's an important metric to be tracking. So just know founders out there, venture capitalists out there, the, uh, the Oregon VC investment amount looks much better in 2024 than it looked in 2023. And I hope that that's a compounding thing where 2025, we look much better than we did in 2024, but who's to say, and again, that's not a judgment on our community or the activity here or anything. It is just a particular metric that people can look at that crunch based news can look at and say, Oh, here's what's going on in Oregon or it's good or it's bad. And so I just want you to be tracking on it again. It's neither here nor there for me. I know how awesome you are. I know what's going on here. So just know that it was nice to see in a national global kind of publication that Oregon in particular got called out for an improving venture capital landscape. And I hope that's helpful for all of you founders, VCs alike in 2024, Oregon seems to be doing much better than it was in 2023. And I hope that trend continues in 2025. Speaking of venture capital, you had to get the weird segue in there. Speaking of venture capital, which can be competitive, uh, one of the things that occurs here pretty regularly are the pitch competitions. And sometimes they're for VC. Sometimes they're just for recognition, uh, which is which is great in and of itself. But sometimes, every once in a while, perhaps annually, there's a competition that's based on previous competitions. And that is exactly what's happening with Demolicious in December. So Demolicious in December is the 2024 champion of 
Champions Contest. Now, if you're not familiar with Demolicious Month to Month, each month they bring a bunch of startups to the stage. They get three minutes to pitch. Crowd votes with their mobile devices or what have you. And at the end, when all the dust clears, somebody is like, oh, you're the Demolicious winner for this month. Why don't you come back next month and compete against a whole new slate of startups? And then that happens. And then maybe the maybe the company that won the previous month continues to win. Maybe there's a whole new winner. But either way, like they go through this cadence month to month, kind of like, you know, people winning, people defending, new champions, champions defending, all that kind of thing. And then we get to December, December 10th, to be exact. And uh, what happens at, at the Mission Theater on December 10th is the Demolicious Champion of Champions contest, which means all those people who've won throughout 2024 all come to the stage and compete against one another to see who is the best of the best. You know, almost like that whole Pokemon theme song kind of thing. Anyway, so <laughs> they, get, they get to compete during during the mon month to month thing. It's only three minutes. Champion of Champions, five minutes for their pitch. Throughout the month, they kind of get to show the belt like, hey, hey, I won this. They don't get to keep it. Not that, not that it's a bad thing. They get to put a sticker on it. They could say, hey, I won this belt. They get photo opportunity kind of thing. But champion of champions get to keep the belt. So a little different. We'll get to see people come to the stage. They get a little more time to tell their story. Same old crowd gets to vote, sees what sees who they like. And then, uh, you know, somebody actually gets to walk away with the belt at the Demolicious Champion of Champions thing. I'll be there. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be wrapped with attention on all of the pitches. I'll be taking notes about who says what, about what they're doing and who all these amazing startups are. And of course, you know, documenting who wins the final thing. But it would be really great if you were there too. Because apart from getting the opportunity to see a bunch of amazing companies in the Portland area take the stage to share what they're building Demolicious also provides the opportunity for you to connect with other people in the Portland startup community. And so that in and of itself is hugely valuable. All that being said, let me read off the list of people who will be taking the stage at Demolicious Champion of Champions. These are people who have won Demolicious before who will be competing to, to take home the belt. This is like the title card. For the, for the whole match, and I, I will read it off just so you have it. December 10th, please RSVP. Uh, space is limited, so get your name in there so you have an opportunity to get in the door. If you're not on the list, you will be turned away. All that, all that being said, all that stuff. Uh, just uh, RSVP so we can see you there, so I can see you there. It'd be great to chat with you. Here are the companies that are competing. Airbuild Detox. Ranger EV, Fian Wagon, Flat, Force Field, Kick Plan, Rose City Robotics, and Shotzi. That's it. That's the list. So those are the companies. You're like, who's Ranger EV? When they competed, they were known as Eco Badlands. Now they're more known as Ranger EV. So uh, anyway, those are the companies. December 10th, Mission Theater, free of charge. Just show up, you know, show up, buy some food and beverage kind of thing to ensure that, that you're having a good time and are, are, are well-maintained throughout the event. But uh, again, I'll be there December 10th for Demolicious. I look forward to seeing all the pitches and I'll look forward to seeing you if you RSVP and get in there before they run out of space, you know? Cool. All right, short week, still a lot of news uh, in the U.S. Obviously, this was Thanksgiving week, which kind of curtailed things, but we're heading into December, uh, heading into the end of the year. Uh, still a lot of work to do, still a lot of news to happen. Super excited for 2025. Again, 
January 14th, please RSVP. If you're still listening to this, what are you even doing? Go RSVP so we can hang out on January 14th uh, because I, I'm looking forward to meeting a bunch of new people from the community then and really looking forward to getting people connected to one another just to kick the year off on the right foot kind of thing and get get connections made and that kind of thing and i don't know this may become a regular thing i'm thinking like second tuesday every month we should be doing something in person in portland to get people connected so stay tuned but the first one january 14th uh look forward to seeing you there please RSVP. And again, hope you got some downtime during this short week. I know you're doing startups, so that's probably not the case, but I I sincerely hope you you were able to at least take a breath or spend some time with friends and family, have some good food and, and relax a little bit. I hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.